Welcome to Stewartstown United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Keith Brocker, and um, Tapestry of Carols blows me away every time. Um, why is this Christmas Eve such a special time? Why is Christmas so important? Why of all the nights do we say this is the night divine? Because there's something that's happening in this story that is so powerful it's beyond our comprehension. Quite literally. I mean, we're talking about a cosmic event where angels show up talking to shepherds and wise men from afar watching stars come to a strange land. Consider the possibility that, well, every one of us at some point has had a pivotal point in your life. Something happened or you got uh, an insight and understood something in a different way where you, you saw the light or it dawned on you a point in your life that changed everything. Christmas is that pivotal point for all of history, where the coming of God in the flesh changed everything. But I also want to say to you that that pivotal point in your life was also the Christmas event. And tonight as we tell the story, and as we reflect on the meaning of this, of how God comes to us in flesh, comes to be with us, Emmanuel, God with us, how this changes everything. So Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we acknowledge your presence with us here and now. Receive our honor, our praise, our glory. And as we listen to the story once again, um, may we with open hearts and open minds and just open lives receive your holy gift once again. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. But I invite you to listen to it as if you were hearing it for the very first time. It's too easy to say, yeah, we know that story. Yeah, we know what that is. Um, and yet there's so many parts of it that we hear it at different levels and at different places in our lives. Hear it as the story that is the pivotal point, perhaps even for your life that the very God who made us actually came to earth. Is there anything more profound than how that changes our way of thinking about life? Matthew, the first chapter, the birth of Jesus took place this way. Mary was engaged to Joseph. Before they came to the marriage bed, Joseph discovered that she was pregnant. It was by the Holy Spirit, but he didn't know that. Joseph was sad but kind and he decided to take care of things quietly so Mary would not be disgraced. While he was trying to figure a way out, God's angel came to him in a dream. The angel told Joseph that Mary's pregnancy was by the Holy Spirit. The angel also told Joseph to name the baby Jesus, or God saves, because he will save people from their sins. Joseph woke from the dream and did exactly as the angel commanded. Look at this from Joseph's perspective. What a mess. It's like, Merry Christmas. I just found out that my fiance is pregnant and I'm not the father. I had plans. Those plans have changed. Have you ever had plans? And then life happened. And it's a mess. It's a mess. So Joseph had to be thinking, how am I going to get out of this mess? How do I take care of this? And he thought through some different things and through some different plans and everything else. Because the mess really wasn't a mess. The mess was a baby, a baby that should not be. And yet right at the heart of this, this baby that should not be, came the answer that resolved the mess. That in the middle of the mess, was born the baby that was to be named Jesus, which literally translates as to God saves. That the salvation came out of the mess. Consider messes in your life. Messes that you had in the past, a mess that you're in right now. I know there's a mess. How do I know you have a mess? You're a human being. 
Life is messy. But God has ordained it in such a way that in that middle of that mess is the potential for the very salvation that you're looking for to be born, for the answer to come, for that mess to be transformed. Remember, this is the God who made heavens and earth. And when we go back to the book of Genesis, it's saying that there was chaos. There was nothing. And God brought order out of the chaos. John, the first chapter, and I'll elaborate this on tomorrow morning. Um, hope you will come with us for part two of the sermon. Um, that it was a, that it was through Christ that everything was made, that everything was brought to order. So that this same God has decided to join us in the mess, in the chaos of our lives, to bring what only God can bring, order and peace. So before we sing, let's have a time of silence and consider the messes and the God who makes a difference. Lord, when life happens, you are with us, Emmanuel. And as you did with Mary and Joseph, you bring salvation. You bring a way out of stuff. And you take the chaos, even the chaos of our lives, to bring order. Help us to be aware of your offering of life to us in the middle of this mess and this precious gift through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That is impossible, improbable, outrageous, fantastic, there's a baby. God is the baby daddy? It's impossible, outrageous, improbable. There are times in our lives when we need something to happen, and we just feel that whatever that is, is just impossible. I'm stuck. I can't do this. I can't overcome this. I can't get through this hurdle. I don't know how I will survive this. This is impossible. And yet God is the God who takes the impossible and makes it possible. Even a birth like Jesus' birth. You know what's really impossible and probable, just completely, utterly fantastic? That there was nothing. And then there was everything. And when the everything came into being, it is sustained. And the one who did that is the one who is Emmanuel, which literally means God with us. That the one who did all of that is with you and with me here and now. Virgin birth, improbable, impossible. What about the creator of the universe giving a care for you and for me? Let's pause and think about that for a moment. Lord, your hands directs the course of the stars. Your love and care for us provides for our daily needs. Your attention sustains the universe such, Lord, that if you turned away, it would just cease to exist. And with a plate as full as being the ruler of the origin, the ruler, and the sustainer of everything. You decided to take human flesh to be with us, to show us your attitude towards us, that you will be with us now and forever. There are no words to respond to that, Lord, except for maybe thank you. I'll go to Luke, the second chapter. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. 
This will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. So this heavenly host comes down and says, We have good news. And this is not just good news, this will be good news for all people, for everyone. High and low, this was given first to the shepherds, eventually the Magi got the notice and they showed up much later, but they showed up following the stars. The good news, think about it from a global perspective. What would be such good news? that everybody would be excited about it. Everybody would be just ecstatic. This would be like, stop all the presses. Um, wait, that's an old newspaper reference. I don't know that we even do that anymore. Uh, it, just, it would be the headline for everything. It would be all the news programs would stop and say, this is good news. And everybody all over the globe would be excited about it. What possibly could that message be? that would be so excited that, you know, what would you look for? Then you think about it, whatever the good news is, whatever that piece of news is that you would be so excited about, that if you heard this good news tonight, it would be life-changing, it would be so exciting. It's the good news you've been waiting for. For every one of us here, that good news might be different. So the good news is that whatever it is that you are waiting for, whatever it is that you need, whatever it is that you fear and you want to be removed, the good news is is that God is saying, yes, this is good news. Jesus comes as a little baby little package. He also comes as a king, as a ruler, to initiate the kingdom of God. And every time we pray the Lord's Prayer, we use the words, as it is on, as it is on earth as it is in heaven, to make it on earth as it is in heaven. That what God has ordained, what God has begun, what the good news is, is that whatever it is that is on earth that is not of the kingdom of heaven will pass. If good news for you would be justice, then you've got really good news because in the end, anything that is unjust, unfair, um, will not last in the kingdom of God. If good news for you is just this outpouring of love and experience of love, just know that God's kingdom has ordained that that which is unloving, that which is cruel, that which is selfish, will not be part of the kingdom of God and will not last. Whatever it is that you want a cease of hostilities, you want peace, so you want the people to be able to live together in harmony, this is the way of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God will not be stopped. Amen? Amen. 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 So whatever it is that you're looking for, whatever it is. Now, just a little caveat. You might be waiting for some particular good news. And it the answer you get may not be exactly what you wanted. I mean, some of you, probably all of you, and if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to watch um, the movie Bruce Almighty, where Bruce Almighty is given the power of God for a temporary period of time. And the one thing that he wants, the one thing that would be the greatest news of all would be to get his girlfriend to love him. And that is not within God's power because God is not going to overcome your will. God always comes to us by invitation, not coercion. And so you might want something to happen, so it's not going to happen. You can say, you know, I heard Pastor Keith say the other night, there's going to be good news, and I'm waiting for that lottery ticket to come, and it didn't happen, so he obviously was lying. But the good news is, is that God, who knows you intimately and loves you unfathomably, knows what the good news is that you need and is actively working to bring that about in your life. Now you, like 
Joseph and Mary, you have some choices that you have to make. You're either going to cooperate with that thing that God is doing, or you're going to go the opposite direction. But there is good news. And that good news is good news for everybody. It may not be exactly the same, as we're not exactly the same. But it is always going to be about justice and love and peace and redemption and mercy and forgiveness and everything that is true of the character of God. And how do we know this? Look at Jesus. It's Luke, the second chapter. One more verse. When the shepherds had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. What would be a word? What would be a message that would get you so excited that you would not be able to hold it in, but you would have to be able to tell somebody else? And when I think of that, I think about people that are near and dear to me. Some of them are very close, some of them are family, some of them are friends. Some of them are just people of the community. And I know that they're looking for hope. Just somewhere the message that there is a community of people that can come together and may not agree with one another, but are willing to love one another. And that God is the one who has the final say of all things. Nobody else. And God has not said, God has said that basically the history is just not going to go down. All, everything we have is not going to go down the drain. Because God's not going to allow that to happen. But we have some choices to make. Isn't that a message of hope? The God who loves us is willing to stand with us and for us and to give us a path to a future. So the story of Christmas. Let's hear it once again in song. And then take that message, like the shepherds, to the world by spreading this light.
Amen.